This is J. Krishnamurti's 10th seminar with scientists at Brockwood Park, 1974. Do you want me to go on with the, with the masters and... I would like to hear it, but I don't know... How I, I don't know if the others want to hear it. Good on, put another point of view. I wonder if we, it, just if, if other people would prefer to go on to meditation. I, and stop, I'll finish this very quickly, sir. Yes. <laughs> I think it is in the Indian tradition, as well as in the Tibetan tradition, that there are such beings who do not appear in the world but live apart and help mankind. This is an old tradition. I'm pretty sure it exists in other religions too and so on. These masters are hierarchical. And there was the head of the religious group in the hierarchy is, according to Tibetan as well as Indian, is Maitreya. Correct me, sir, if I'm wrong. And he, when the world is in an unrighteous state, descends. And for that manifestation, or avatar, these Dr. Besant and other people were told to look for an, a, a, an individual who would be suitable for that occupation. Are you interested in all this? Mm. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, people are wondering uh, whether you had some special talent when you were young. Um, for that manifest, let me finish. For that manifestation, so they were looking and they found this boy. They were, I'm, I'm making it as brief as possible, and they said we must prepare this boy for that manifestation. And they were very serious people. They were not just uh, crooked, exploiting, or... They said, this is a thing which we firmly believe in. It's also in the Indian tradition that when you sleep, there are various forms of the individual, astral, which travel from place to place. This is in the Indian tradition, as well as in the Tibetan tradition. So the masters told Dr. Besant and others that the, the Maitreya, the board teacher, would manifest and they must look for, look for a body. They found a body, uh, the boy, and they were preparing that boy for his manifestation. He was looked after very, very, very carefully. I can't go into the details, it's all written out somewhere, for a number of years. Being a Brahmin, the boy never touched meat and he has not touched meat since ever. He doesn't know what the taste of meat or smoke or drink from, the, from childhood. And they prepared it. And prepared the body. And they wanted also a, an organization which would, which would help him when he was here. So they formed this tremendous organization all over the world with a great deal of property, money and all the rest of it. And in 1910, or before or after, I don't remember exactly the date. There was 
the boy was put through various forms of initiations. Again, in the Indian tradition and Tibetan tradition, while he was asleep and awake in state, and he was he was to, he was sent to school, college sent to school, and he tried to pass exams. He never failed. He failed in every one exam, London University, etc., etc. He was sent to Sorbonne, and there too they tried to get him to pass an exam, couldn't do it. So they said, for God's sake, stop it now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he, at a certain age, he began to speak against authority, the whole business. And in 1928, he dissolved, 28 I think it was, dissolved the whole thing. And he has been talking since then. Now, the idea of masters and the manifestation of the highest teacher is an accepted tradition in India and in Tibet. It is not, it is what they said, what I think is maybe different, I'm not, that's not important. They said this is this has been an ancient tradition from the time pre Buddha. I don't know if you know all about it. that. Is Buddha was five hundred and fifty BC, and this is this tradition exists before him. Kapila, if you know anything about this, very very ancient, and. Few people were given the privilege, according to them, to be in contact with them. And at the age of 14, 15, I've forgotten, whatever it was, he wrote at the feet of the Master, that's the Master's all that. You see, their idea was. To finish the story, they looked for the boy who, in whose aura, you know aura, what that means? To the, every person, again, Indian tradition and Tibetan tradition, that every person exudes a certain atmosphere, certain vibrations, certain uh, quality, whatever it is, which surround him, which is logical, which can see. And if you are clairvoyant, uh, sensitive, you see those auras. And when they f saw this boy, they said, Echo, oh! <laughs> because in his aura there was very little selfishness. That, now that's the end of it. You may believe all this or you may not believe it, but they believed it with their heart and soul and they committed themselves up to the hilt. You understand? It was Dr. Besant was very well known in England, in Europe and in America. She, was, she led the first woman strike, she was the leader of, and she was the leader of birth control. She was the, oh, it was the, worked with Brad Law and so on. She was very known, very well known socialist, Fabian, and all that. So she, when she said that boy is going to be the teacher, that te that great teacher has manifested, she staked all her reputation. You follow, sir? all her reputation, all her work, everything into that. When you disbanded it, was she angry? No, I think she was sad. 
Did you continue to see her afterwards? Oh, good Lord! <laughs> she treated me as her son and guru. I used to, um, wherever I went, in those days, she took me. Oh, good heavens! Even after, after. Oh, good Lord! <laughs> it isn't a thing you give up because love isn't something you give up because you do something wrong or right. When you say that the boy had a special aura, did, what special did they see in terms of any special colors or shapes? Or what yes. did they say? <laughs> if you want to answer, I don't know. This is all, sir, again, tradition. Yeah. Selfishness, I believe, is red, isn't it? I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't know that. Or some color like that. Now, what I would like to impress and say is that there were very serious people, maybe misguided, whatever you like to think, but they were not charlatans, not just uh, for entertainment, for circus, for something else. They were really deadly serious people. Were you sad when you had to dissolve it? What, sir? Were you sad? You, you saw that it had to be dissolved, you dissolved it. You have had no regrets, but were you sad? No. Um, I didn't want to... I think I like this long time I didn't want to upset Dr. Besant. Because uh -huh. she brought me up, she was my mother. You know, the whole feeling that she was... she had looked after <coughs> me and all that, suddenly to... The things she had built around me, suddenly it's all wrong. You know, it naturally was a little bit shy, embarrassed, and little perhaps sad, but not. It had to be done, to put it. I'd like to ask you a question. It's not connected with. Um, Doesn't matter. And I'm, I'm asking it, in, you know, in the best of faith. It doesn't <laughs> It's true. This week, when we've been talking, all of us taking turns, have you been hearing what we've been saying? Yes. Right? You've been listening. You, you've been. Does it matter to you what we've been saying? Little bit, yes. Because you are talking something which I don't know. You're talking, using words which I had to find out the meaning of. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to, not only to your words, but trying to capture behind the world. What I'm really getting to is, um, have you ever changed your view of the world and about people, etc., because of what other people have said? Oh, no. I've never changed. What I'm talking about, I've been talking for the last 50 years, and it's gone, and I've achieved it. So nothing that somebody could say will... No, sir. <laughs> After all, these are very simple things which we are talking about. Pleasure, fear, you know, all the rest of it, human behaviour. and. And either it is so or it is not so. But people hold, um, people hold views about love and pleasure and pain and we, that are different from yours. I said, oh, definitely, I know that. So I, sat, I have sat with those <coughs> people by the hour, we've discussed it. Either they convince me or they, I've convinced them. But you just said that they've never convinced you. I'm afraid not. So it so wasn't. It wasn't obstinacy. It wasn't uh, prejudice. What is there to be convinced? So for you, then the teaching process is really—it's a one-way flow. <laughs> he too sh should have been an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
Oh. In a way, yes, and in a way, no, because I don't, I think the whole idea of a teacher and disciple is not tenable. It is, oneself must be the teacher and the disciple. And you, if you are willing to listen, then you are the teacher and the disciple for yourself. No, I agree that the that the teacher disciple um, thing is not right. But I mean, teaching the process of teaching is if makes, you, for me makes much sense. And yes, I, we could you know everyone. That is, if you care to listen. I don't want to convince you. I don't want to do propaganda. If you care to listen, listen. If you don't, it's all right. Do you feel the same way? What do you mean? Do you feel the same way towards people who are talking to you? I don't quite understand. I mean, do you leave open the possibility that the persons that are talking to you could... Oh, yes, change? obviously. I'm not such a... I may look right. an ass, but no, I... No, no, no. That's, that's why I said I asked you... I carefully listen. But so far... It's I'm afraid not. Because I've discussed with analysts, professors, psychologists, <laughs> I've discussed with uh, traditional Hindus, Catholics, Jesuits, and some scientists in India, in France, and with Dr. Baum. They kept for years, we've been talking about these things. Have you yourself changed over the years? Not because of the influence of other people, but of your own uh, evolution, that you had new insights and... No, sir, I mean, I have changed the words, changed the uh, phrases, uh -huh. but the central core... But you reached a balanced state a long time ago and then stayed in that state. Would, Would you, you like that? to put it that way? Mm. Did you experience violence in yourself no, at sir. some earlier time in your no, life? No. I might have got irritated, but that's super, but never deeply violent. No. The, 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 how did you, how did you come to understand the nature of violence, not experiencing it yourself? It's around you. Why should I get drunk in order to find what sobriety is? But you often, you seem to say it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to you seem at times to say that the way to understand violence is to understand yourself, that you can come to understand this by understanding your own violence. No, so I see violence around me. Hate, antagonism, you know, all the whole business. And to understand it, must one go through it oneself? Well, there's something to knowing what it feels like. No, I've never honestly felt that. This raises the question of perception, doesn't it? Of and also it raises a question, sir, which is very fundamental, I think, if I may, may I go into it a little bit? Which is, can the mind, psyche, be not hurt? You understand? Because if one is hurt, then violence begins. That hurt builds a fence around oneself. And to protect oneself, one becomes violent. You know, all the whole reaction of that desire to shrink, without desire to not to be hurt again. From that, one of the re major reasons for violence is this. And is it possible for a mind not to be hurt at all? I say, for me, I say yes, it is possible. Whether hurt or flattery. You understand? Yes. Both are the same, of the two facets of the same coin. Because 
during all those years, when I was the head, I was literally worshipped. You understand, sir? Candles. <laughs> you have no idea what it was like in India and sometimes in Europe and so on. I'd like to raise this matter of teaching because I'm not very clear on it myself that uh, it seems to me to that one must accept some fundamental difficulty here that uh, that in uh, the modern world the idea is that one mustn't use violence against other people's minds by um, pushing things, ideas at them and somehow or other one must encourage the other person to develop their own potential. But on the other hand it seems inevitable that in as much as one has in any interaction with them that one is uh, bringing in things course, which make an impact. Of course, but we are talking here now. I know, it's very clear to me, mere influence, stimulation, is no value. But if you and I, you and I, could look at the thing together, uh, observe this thing together, share this together, then it's yours, it's not mine, it's together it is. I don't know if I'm conveying anything at all in that. I need to think about it. Then, yeah. We are sharing this food together. It's not my food or your food, it's food. Yes, but the food came from you initially. What's that? The food came from you initially, that you share. Yeah, no, no, no that's the pro uh, so, Suppose you see something which is true. True in the sense, not, um, well, let's keep to, you see something which is true. And, I'm, and you talk about it, and you want to share it with me. I must also be in a state of attention to share it. I must also stretch out my hand. I must also be willing to listen to what you have to say. then in that sharing it is not the, your product of my it is there it is there to be shared because you mean you encourage something which is already there in the other person and no no so i talk to these students fortunately or unfortunately I don't want to influence them. I don't want to do propaganda, because I think propaganda becomes a lie. And I want them to listen, just to f look at something which somebody sees differently. In that looking, they will discover what it is. Then what they discover is this sharing. Say, for instance, what we're going to do after this, we're going to, you know, somebody asked, please this talk, um, let's talk over together meditation. I'll go into it. But to understand it, you have to meditate. You have to, uh, you have to 
get into the spirit of it. Then it is not mine or yours, it is the movement between us. I don't know how to put it. Uh, one of the points which you keep making is that one should stop thinking. You talk very much about thought. You are very much concerned to make people, not maybe to make people, but to point out that one should stop thinking. Now, the method you use is mainly a verbal method. It is not only verbal, but it is largely verbal, because essentially what you do is you sit on a chair and you talk. Now, uh, there are other teachers who use other methods, some of them completely non-verbal methods. Now, uh, do you think that to use, in a way, thought to make people stop thinking is more difficult, or is, this, is a more difficult method, or uh, do you have a predilection for words, for using the verbal method, or so did it just happen that you used it and found it efficient and keep using it? That's all. That's all. And also, there's a... Uh, it has happened on several occasions, non-verbal communication. Yes, I know, it's, it must come in addition, because you can't do it with words alone, of course. of course. But there is a great danger in that. It becomes translated or um, interpreted according to the listener's prejudices. Mm -hmm. So it is not a direct non-verbal communication. Yes. But also, of course, there is difference between verbal and verbal, and you of you course. have a very specific technique. Did you develop this consciously, or did this no, come, it came about? Back, no. came about? It's really a question about um, the nature of institutions and how they should properly be structured in order to allow for cooperative sharing activity. When the Theosophical Society existed... It, you, it still exists. Yes, when you were involved in it, you felt it was an obstructive institution. Uh, it was, in some sense, propagating error. No, sir. I didn't. I felt any religious organization, any religious one, whether it's a small one or the Catholic or the Protestant, or any religious organization based on belief and authority and all that, is detrimental to the understanding of truth. Mm -hmm. And the principle of this institution, that is Brockwood Park, is, is one which involves no authority, but each person being their own center of creative activity and as the far encouragement as of as, cooperative. Of course, they're children, therefore they're <laughs> not here, they're disappearing, all that. But it's, yes. I'd like to ask you a question again related to my other questions, if I may. Do you think you have any prejudices which you bring to discussing and talking with other people? I hope not. None at all? I said I hope not. I, and if I do discover it, hmm. I, I know, I mean, it can be stopped instantly with me. I think I use the word prejudice, it's the wrong word. I, what I mean is, do you think you hear what other people say to you through a sort of filter. No, no, no. Say, for instance, you you have been talking a great deal here about science mm -hmm. and more, <coughs> more, all the rest of it. Certainly, I I don't understand some of it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the phraseology, <coughs> and somebody asks that question, and I get the meaning of it, and I listen. But suppose. Uh, an Indian traditionalist comes to me, hmm? or as it has happened, several Jesuits come to see me. They want to convince me. They want to say, look, authority is necessary. Uh, there is God. And so on, so on. I listen very, very carefully. It's not I filter, have a filter, through which I listen. I listen very carefully. This has happened many, many times. 
I proved it myself. Not proved it. It's so obvious when you are listening with a prejudice when it's not prejudice. Well, I think we, we might, I mean, I think it's almost necessary that we, all of us, in virtue of our being human, have to take some filter. We have to use, I mean, that's part of what that's being my, human is. Why yeah. should I listen with a prejudice when I want to understand what you are saying? Because you have to, because you're a human being. That's not what. at all. Why should I have a pre- I want to understand you. Look, sir, I want to understand my wife. Hmm? Mm-hmm. I want, I, she says something to me. Why should I? not listen without prejudice. Because, she, I love her. Something is wrong. Yeah. If I Sorry, I think we're, we're equivocating on the meaning of the word. Ah. We are, every, I am to, on the meaning of the word prejudice. I don't mean prejudice in a pejorative sense. I mean... Pre for prejudice means prejudging. I don't even mean it in that act of a sense. I mean the way Kant used the, the notions of space and time. I mean, they are necessary filters in virtue of our being human, that they must go through that... I don't filter. quite understand you. Would it be, make any sense to put it this way, that you can understand an Indian person quite easily because you're Indian, you grew up in India. You might I grew, not up, sir, you might I grew not, up in yeah. India till I yes. was nine years old, mm. after ten years old. After or, or European, for that matter, but say someone from Japan, uh, maybe a little bit more difficult to understand the lang- the sort of oh, obvious. the terms they use and all that, and the uh, imagery. Obviously. So I mean, that's a form of that, is that what the sort of thing you mean? Yeah, it's the form through which perceptions must go through. So through. look, I understand French, Italian, and Spanish. Hmm? When they talk in French, I understand there is no blockage, there is no filter. I don't understand this it's question. It's not a blockage. It's not a block. It is the. F- it, uh, would you accept the word framework? Yes. Um, yes. For example, a framework rather than prejudice. Uh, for example, if there is a person who was um, who was a political activist, a violent political activist and organizer from his youth, and who has killed and cheated and done all kinds of things, the spy who came in from the coal, that kind of deal. <laughs> uh, are you able to de- talk with that particular of person? Course. On what basis? What experience I, do you have? First of all, he comes to see me. Mm. Mm. I don't go to see him. He thinks I'm a nut to be convinced. So he comes to see me. So he's willing to listen to what I have to say. And I'm willing to listen to what he has to say. I've met many of them there. I have no frame. Why should I want to understand you? Why should I have a framework about it? Why don't you? Why can't we make it simple? Yeah, I could take an example if I may. I have a friend uh, whom you also know, who's a very good, accomplished musician. He lives in Benares. Uh, he had promised a number of things. He had said he had come to wanted to come to Bangalore. And he must. I must arrange an invitation. But considerable amount of difficulty, we arranged a n- number of dates. And he said, I am coming and uh, on this particular day, and they stay for six weeks and I'll give several seminars and you must pay me airfare, etc. Oh, everything is arranged. I check back and forth, make sure. He comes, three days later he says, now by the way, I have to go to Madras because Subhulakshmi has asked me to go. So he has to go. He goes and then he says, I don't really know when I can come back, but I think I'll try to come back. <laughs> now, I find it completely impossible to understand, and he's a very good friend of mine and uh, okay. cherished, very dear friend of mine. I cannot understand why he would act that particular way. I try to put myself into his place. Well, I just don't understand. He was using you. Why? What's the difficulty? Why would he want well, to? He could have said that, look, I want to come for three days, and I want well, to... I, I can't answer about him, but uh, you are saying, do I act that way? You know, what I'm saying is that if any of my scientific colleagues, if they said such a thing and did such a thing, I wouldn't even want to talk to them afterwards because it is just understood that you don't do things like that. Here he did it and I, I, he doesn't feel guilty about it. So what is the real... I I, what I'm saying is that I find it impossible to comprehend how he does it. But in the artistic world, apparently people do this all the yes. time. You're supposing that there's a key, and if you had it, you could then, uh, his, his behavior would form a pattern, huh. which you then understand. Huh. You see, uh, let me tell... Was this the kind of thing you were asking? Sort of. Let me, I'll try to explain what I was meaning. 
at lunch I had a talk with David and we were talking really about this kind of thing, about um, what would count is either of us accepting or rejecting, and then there was a blank because we really weren't getting clear, or at least I wasn't getting clear, just what was at issue, you know, when we're arguing about, I mean, he's telling me that I'm letting my um, Aristotelian-based concepts get in the way of what you know, and I, I'm trying to understand what he's meaning, you know, I want to understand it. It's not as if there's any hostility between us, you see, there's, and it suddenly dawned on me that maybe the framework that David's come to accept about thinking about the world and about all the sorts of things we were talking about here, the, fr the, very, the very framework is, in a sense, I, I don't know how strong to put say it, as a first stab, incompatible with mine. That is, it was difficult to see what, for David, would count as a bit of well, a bit of insight on my part that would lead him to want to revise his framework. Not completely reject it, but revise it. And then I started thinking, well, it seems to me that there's a, there's a sense in which... Well, then I started thinking of a lot of things. I mean, um, Liz and I went down to a, a society called the Psionic Medicine Society one day last year and to give a talk, and it was clear that there was absolutely no possibility of communication, and that um, they looked at us with an enlightened look in their eyes and said, you know, if only you had experienced Jesus Christ, you'd understand what we were saying. And at that point, I just stopped talking because I realized that any more talk on my part would create hostility. So I stopped talking. Now, it's not like that here. Thank goodness. But, you see, I'm wondering whether once this view has been seen, or in, in using your words that you used this morning, once we perceive this whole view, whether there's a possibility of... And remember now, the view's there. And let's assume for the sake of argument that I, I've grasped it, grasped it as deeply as you have and as you have. Whether we could, after the view is suddenly in a flash, if you want, come, become clear, we can apply our critical faculties to it to begin to question it, to of see how it relates. Of course, of course, I have done, of course. Well, well, it seems to me then that it's... There's barriers that are being put up, that are there perhaps, that are inherent in this framework, which are preventing other people, like me, who don't share that framework completely, no, are, from... Aren't we, yeah. we just talking about the difficulties of <coughs> words and verbal no, communication? No, we're not. It's a no, much no. deeper To issue. me, it is it's obvious that words are inambiguous, and the, the ambiguity... are uh, ambiguous, sorry. Words are ambiguous, and the ambiguity arises from your personal history, because you associate words with different things than I, because you had a different history. This is your framework, and as long as we communicate verbally, there will always be this slight difference. Yeah, but we, but you and I communicate, I mean, we all of us communicate, there's, look, we can find, there's some level or other on which all of us can communicate. <coughs> you might say, oh, I'm hungry, let's go and have something to eat, that's a level, and we yeah. can start from there. So, yeah. words aren't all that ambiguous, and if you were to be symbolized as one circle of a Venn diagram, and me as another, it's not as if we're completely non-touch it, we're overlapping, so there is an area. But the essential things we're talking about here belong to these parts which are ambiguous and where we have difficulties. And I wanted to answer uh, the point we raised here before, because uh, we were discussing over lunch, and uh, I think the point involves this question, you see, that uh, I think Kant has said there are certain necessary forms of human perception which uh, have space and time and causality and various of necessity, various modalities, uh, which, and that human perception is not possible outside that. Now, uh, the other point is the question of the Aristotelian logic. And I thought I would mention, you know, I was at a conference recently where I met some people who were very familiar with Aristotle. And they said, they said Aristotle did not actually hold to Aristotelian logic that he, he said Aristotelian logic, I should explain to people what it is in case they don't know. But let's say there's a rule in logic, which is that uh, the, law, the rule of non-contradiction, which says uh, A is not not A. The, uh, between two, a, a and not A, there's no mean. It's either A or not A, is roughly that. It is not the case that brackets A and not A. Yes, I mean, that's the more technical way of putting it. But the, now, the, this was enunciated first by Aristotle, as far as is known. But Aristotle also said this rule only applies to the past and not to the future. 
Uh, now, in other words, this, I was told that people who have really studied it that that's the case. Now, the, uh, in, other, the, uh, in other words, uh, to an action which is completed and in a sense gone, the, this logic applies. Now, the, uh, in, in any situation where we can anticipate the future from the past, the logic will also apply. But I think we are in a situation where the future cannot be anticipated from the past, as that's what we are discussing now. And we could say, broadly speaking, that these rules of logic are not going to help us here. Uh, but they, that, that framework, it is necessary to listen without putting that framework in the way. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong, but that this framework itself may prevent listening. But now, what about the Kantian forms? Because that's more crucial to what Well, we're... perhaps even they could. You see, could one suspend all frameworks? That is the point, you see. Well, that's the point. The, I mean, <laughs> Kant's answer is no. But how does he, he say <laughs> perception without forms is a blooming no, blooming... I know that's what he says. I know that. But you see, that is a conclusion. That is, you see, you see, Kant could more accurately say, I know of no perception without the forms. I mean, that is as much as Kant is legitimately allowed to say. But, you see, he cannot say there is none, because he merely can say, I know of none. Is it not then possible to accept that there might be such a framework, and that this is what... Oh, there might not be a framework. Or there might not. Yes, or there might not be. Well, you see, I mean, the point, I've already, I mean, I've got an inkling of what your framework is. I mean, I could actually list down a set of, you know, um, that have emerged, a set of statements the truth of which have emerged during the talk, which I mustn't violate in order to get into your framework. Well, now, that, those, that, those are your forms. Now, the point is, if that's true, then why can't we talk about those forms? You see, I think we're not meeting, because you see, we're trying to say... Um, you see, you, you, you have made some assumptions as to what the, my framework is, uh, on the basis of watching me. So, you was asking a question. Yeah. Well... I, th I, think, I think Julian has a point. I think we all do operate from some framework of some kind, and that this is inevitable. Uh, but I think it, it comes down to understanding the framework. And I, I've, been, uh, I've been asking myself, I've been trying to get in touch with why I feel so annoyed at you. <laughs> um, and, 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 it, and it has and it has a number of roots, but but w one of the things is that when I said to you before, you know, I feel that you don't love me. Uh, I really feel I really feel that's true, and I respond defensively to that and, right. and feel and feel irritated. And I feel that I th I think I understand your framework. I've uh, I think I've been there. But I never get the feeling that you're willing to try on my framework, really. But, and an example was when you were talking just now about David's framework, you said, well, you could put down, you know, the, the decision matrix to make a decision. No, it wouldn't be that. Well, but, but you were back in your own framework again. As soon as you start saying, well, I could decide about his framework, you were using your framework to make that decision. I don't think you get his framework. I don't think you've tried it on. And until you try it on, then you can't decide about the two frameworks. That's how different they are. Yes, so, to us, may I say something? Do you know anything about meditation? Yes, but not the sort of, the, the sort of meditation that you said you didn't no, like. Do you know the, anything about meditation? Yes, yes. What kind? I don't know the name of it, but the, the sort of meditation I'm familiar with is the sort of meditation uh, that first, well, the process of meditation I'm familiar with is you focus on something. Ah, yeah, that's the you, concentration. Yes, the concentration type now, of meditation. I want to tell you something. I said that's not meditation. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no framework. I said that's not meditation. And therefore, please listen to what I say. And when you listen, don't bring in that framework. Right. Hmm? You want to find out what another person says about meditation. Mm -hmm. So you must be free, if not you must, you understand? Mm -hmm. Freedom from a frame, from your framework. Mm -hmm. That's all we are saying. That's a good example, because it's easy. It's, when one's ta 
talking about something as specific as meditation. I'm talking of that. Yes. Now I, I can easily relax my my view about what counts as meditation, and I could say, right, this whole the, this focus method of meditating is not what you're talking about. So I'm going to relax that. And the same thing. Please but, listen about pleasure. Uh, yes. And, don't put it into a framework. Yes, yes, I, but you see, we're talking now really then about meta framework. No, no. That, and that I can't relax. And that I agree with. I mean, I think not that there's anything historically important. Uh, could, could I ask a question? About this? Please, sir. Uh, at this point where you tell him that the meditation which you concentrate, that is not true meditation. Meditation is this. Is he not entitled to ask you? As I was about to ask you, of course. are you now redefining the word saying that the other meditation is not the true meditation? I are you ascribing a new meaning to the no, word meditation? No, I would go into it. Ah. I would go into the whole idea of concentration. What is involved in concentration? No, no. no uh, what I am trying to say is that, ask is that this is. We are not asking the question whether this is more useful, more ah, no, inclusive, no, no. more uh, a genuine framework. He could ask the question, when you say that that is not meditation, are you now enlarging the scope, therefore this is not meditation? It's like very much, if I were to tell something about physics, then David could say, no, 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 that's not really the physics. The true physics is one when you can see this and that together. Or uh, So in this case, are you expanding the definition of meditation or saying that that is in fact incorrect? If that, you concentrate that's and... Uh, that's all. That is incorrect. Incorrect. Therefore, well. wait, sir. When you realize it incorrect, and if you are interested in meditation, then you listen. You have no framework. Will you show us why it's incorrect? Huh? Will you show us why it is incorrect? Ah, yes, that's different. I mean, I'll show it to you, but that's... Now, could, could the process go the other way? Just because it... Could, could, it, could we switch it around a bit? And I could say to you, or Sadashu knows it better than me, perhaps say, I'm going to teach you about meditation. Right. And you say, and we start talking about the concentration type of meditation. Yes. And you say, no, 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 it's no, not meditation. No, and I, I, wouldn't, say, I wouldn't be so foolish as that. I would listen to you. Mm -hmm. I would but, say, no. But then after I'm finished, now I'm finished talking, I'm finished talking, and look, you've grasped what I've said. Oh, that's true. Right. But you don't agree. I, no. I, not, I, this is not a question of agreement or disagreement. It's a question of seeing if, if concentration, which means exclusion, mm -hmm. will, effort, effort. Right. conflict, mm -hmm. and, that is and a resistance, mm -hmm. all that's implied in that word. Mm -hmm. And I say it could be successful. I, no, we're not talking of success. Well, but we are, I mean... No, no, no. Let's talk about words now, about yes, you know, well, the different contexts say, of the word. I'm really lost here, because for me this really is a question of words. And I could very well tell uh, my friend in London, we were talking about meditation, and you see, meditation in the Krishnamurti sense is that and that, and meditation in some other Indian sense means that and that. It's the one is your framework, the other one uh, is no. the traditional Indian no. framework. No, me, both no, no. You said you said framework. No, sir, I'm not talking of frameworks. I you're say, using meditation in a very specific no, sense. No, sir, you are. Uh, Could they start? Uh, I have work? said. I go into if you are, if you want to go into it. Yes, I say I first take concentration. I go into it. I go into the question of control. Yes. I go into the question of um, effort, mm -hmm. will, yes. mm -hmm. and I show it to you how it, it is, how there is conflict in all that, yes. how there is choice in all that, yes. how there is direction in all that. Where there is direction, there must be time. Hmm? Or, sir? <laughs> so I sh show you all this. I used to follow you. I said that all that is really a form of self perpetuation in a different level. Because you are, you are struggling fighting, all the rest of it, you are moved to a higher level of the same... But then this 
this supposes that we we both know at the beginning of of the conversation the meaning of the word meditation. Yes, meditation means what uh, Dr. Bohm pointed out this morning, or also means to think, to ponder over, to think together, all the rest of it. But if you stick to your framework and I stick to my framework, then there is no communication at all. Uh, you want to say? Yeah, see, this is what I think Sudarshan was getting at. If we mean the same thing by meditation, and if the procedures and the aims and the goals and the presuppositions of both our methods are different, <laughs> then, and, but we mean the same thing, then we ought to argue be, be capable of arguing in the non-pejorative sense of arguing about, I was going to say rightness and wrongness, but we ought to at least, never mind that, we, could, we ought to compare and contrast the two types of methods, if we mean the same thing by meditation. Yes, and, and, and I just want to say that, that implies a framework in which you compare and contrast. Uh, yes. Um, well, I, I wonder whether, um, you know, we're getting into difficulties because over the question of definitions, you can look up the definition of meditation in different dictionaries, you'll get different answers. But, I mean, could we go into meditation the way you think it, you know, your view of meditation, forgetting other religions, other systems of meditation? Uh, no, no, you can't. No. Uh. You can't say, well, forget Zen Buddhism, forget Indian meditation, forget uh, transcendental meditation. They all use this word. They all say this is the method. They all say you will find God or whatever it they find. You will experience. They all say this. But most people here haven't had much experience of any form of meditation. No, so it doesn't, doesn't have much meaning to them to talk about you know, Indian meditation or other things. Just no, we're talking now more before. about methodology. But we're using no, no, meditation, no, more no. meditation than methodology. The chairman's pointing at me. The chairman's <laughs> pointing at me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say... In, in, in Ottawa, in, in our gallery, there was a piece of sculpture board, and, uh, and it caused a lot of controversy. Now, I've seen people go in, two or three people, and they go in and they say, I can't understand this, and they argue about it. And, it, and it, sometimes they don't even look at the sculpture, they're just arguing about something they're not even taking the chance to see. And I feel we're beginning to do that now. I am afraid. Yes, could we? No, a little more order. Do you want me? to go into the question of meditation? Yes, but it seems to me there is some unfinished business. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, um, <coughs> may I say a couple of words, so if you think you would like to clear it up. I have undertaken four different kinds of meditation. One with my master and three with sort of uh, intermediate level teachers. One of them makes use of a mantra something that was given under due processes of law, so to say, by a certain person. And he said, I was very disappointed when he finally let me into the secret of what the mantra was. It looked like, you know, I thought it was something very powerful. <laughs> and I practiced it. And uh, he said, this is not going to give you anything. You will feel a certain sense of peace. And sure enough, I didn't get anything else. I felt a certain sense of peace. <laughs> then there was a kind of meditation in which um, I was supposed to concentrate on a certain entity, a precious stone and uh, it said that you will feel a certain sense of power. And I have, I feel it, maybe because the man who said it is a person whom I have some respect for. Third one is transcendental meditation, which it said, don't fuss about it, you know, sort of have a gentle preference for a certain sound. But if other things come, it's all right. If you feel that it has been a waste, then also it's all right. It doesn't matter how you feel, it is still effective, like sort of horseshoe that you put it. But my master tells me, no, true meditation is none of these things. True meditation is union. And the union in which you find that you are the witness to the eternal activities of everything. Don't consider that, take the doership from one thought to another thought, etc., etc. With him, I cannot argue. I mean, he's my master. He wouldn't. I either accept it or I don't accept it. But you, if I was your master, you would accept it. <laughs> you would argue yes. with me. Yes, I would not argue. Even now, I find it a little hes yes, hesitation to argue with you, but you did permit it. Uh, in, <laughs> and in this kind of activity, there is nothing is promised, but in fact, it is the very nature of existence. 
and that meditation does not involve that you take your time off from your routine duties you go no, about no. when you sleep as you have your bath as you eat as you argue with other people and cut in front of somebody else's car all these things that you do and at the same time you continue this kind of thing now clearly the first three are there are differences in method the fourth one is not a case of saying that the other one is not true meditation what is then meant is that true meditation is a new phrase not a phrase which is to be substituted in place it is a different kind it is an entirely different approach i could either say that in fact this is the only meditation the other things are sort of games phony, phony yes um, you know it's more the power of suggestion or the power of uh, yes, you know magic of a certain kind but the other three there is a question of comparison and um, you can take two different people i mean a transcendental meditation man and a buddhist meditation man and they could argue about which is the right method but in this case you are talking about the same thing the third, fourth one you don't argue because my master simply defined that this is the true meditation and therefore i don't argue with him about semantics he said that is it and i don't compare the two and i see that they cannot be compared now i think i speak also for uh, julian when i say that it appears that when you say that the true meditation is a certain kind for example in this case we are no longer talking about is this meditation and that meditation the same I it is simply like... you are pointing out that this is a better kind of meditation no, in fact the only no, possible kind of no mm. no <laughs> i am pointing out may i go into it so now do you want to discuss yeah. meditation yes anyway we wanted to what's it no, no i i mean robin had earlier said that we must talk about meditation so it is come do you want to go into it sir so, i mean yeah. all it's up to you First of all, sir, meditation is not something that you do for ten minutes a day and forget for the rest of the day. It is, it is right through life. It is establishing right relationship with another. It is establishing. behavior all that that's part of meditation right it's not divorced from relationship it's not divorced from daily activity of greed and we you have to understand all that and go beyond all that that means a life that is tremendously orderly right sir orderly in the sense in yourself there is no disorder no contradiction what saying one thing doing another thinking one thing and acting another so there is no contradiction so you have to understand there all that right right sir i don't know if you follow all this you unless you do that you can't go further if i don't know the meaning of word love i cannot go any further in meditation and if there is any quality in me of hate antagonism i have to understand it go beyond it in daily life that's part of meditation right at the whole then i begin after establishing a righteous behavior please i'm using old fashioned word and i hope you don't mind not according to a pattern but a call but having understood what is disorder hmm? in myself in society in my relationship etc etc and the in the understanding and the perception of it not i as the observer 
and disorder, the observed, but only the observation of disorder, without the observer. That's part of meditation. After establishing all that, then I go into the question of thought, if you are interested. Thought is time. Thought is a material process. Thought is the response of memory, experience, knowledge. And can that thought, which is constantly functioning, chattering, 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 stop naturally? Which means, see, sees its own limitation and therefore has an insight into its own uh, necessity of ending itself, up, except in action, except in technology daily. Can it do it? I have to find. That's part of meditation. And can that thought, which assumes the authority of the controller, because thought is fragment among many other fragments, that thought assumes the authority as the introspector, as the investigator, as the observer, dominant over the other fragments, can that thought see itself as the whole? Do I do? May I also know Greek? Oh, some of you know Greek. Mm. So, thought, can thought be come to an end, which means time. You follow so all that's involved in it. And it also implies, is the observer different from the observed? Or is the, there is only the seeing and not the observer seeing? Right? And also involved is the controller and the control. Is there a difference between the controller and the control? Or there is only the control, not the controller? The controller is the control. The thinker is the thought. So, control disappears. Right from the beginning, not at the end. I see a beautiful car, or a beautiful woman, or a beautiful jewel, and the attraction. Hmm? You follow? All the implied. And no control. Which doesn't mean I go and buy cars, I haven't got the money. No control. I don't know. All that's implied in the question of control. Controller, the entity who controls, is the control. The observer is the observer. So you remove totally conflict, because there is no division between the observer and the observed. I don't think. Right? So when you say, as you said, sir, meditation is Focusing your attention, concentration, I say, look what you're doing. That is, you are dividing the controller and the controlled. Therefore, you are introducing a factor of conflict, introducing a factor of will. I'm therefore resistance. Therefore, you are not aware of the resistance. But there is an attention, which is not concentration, but that very attention becomes concentration. It is not a resistance. Okay. May I go? No, I want to... <laughs> and now comes the, I, 
the repetition of words brings certain quietness to the mind. But that's not peace, that's not real silence. It's an induced silence. I can take a pill, I can take a tranquilizer, and my mind is extraordinarily quiet. So I say that's, that is uh, why play tricks with yourself. And the repetition of a word, a mantra, which is the sound, first you utter it loudly, you, whatever that mantra is, Coca-Cola, God knows what, that you repeat that word loudly, then gradually, silently, and it brings you a sense of otherness. Right, sir? And look what you're doing. I said, you might just as well take a drug. You want a result, right? You want to have an experience, you have a motive. And, and the motive is that either satisfaction, pleasure, gratification, or the desire to experience something extraordinary. Right? I don't know if you're interested in all this. Therefore, why don't you why do you want to experience something extraordinary? Because you are bored with your life. You have had sex, you have had droughts, you have had power, position, now you want something superior. The, you're still in the same pattern. Right? <laughs> right, sir. So I say, look what that is that meditation which is furthering of your own pleasure at a different level, which is the continuation of the self at perhaps at a sublimated level, but it is still the self. And thought can project something and call it sacred. Right? I know, I used to know a man, if you're interested, I'll tell you. Am I, can I go on with all this? Are you interested in all this? I used to know a man who one day he was walking on the beach and there was a piece of wood washed by the sea, it must have been there for years and years, and he picked it up and it had an extraordinary shape. Extraordinary, he showed it to me. It was quite a marvelous shape, beautifully polished. With that wood, it was teak, grain. It was really an extraordinary object. So he took it home and put it on the mantelpiece or on a table. And he looked at it and he said, What marvelous thing that is. And one day, casually, he put a flower in front of it. And after a couple of years, that became the sacred thing. Nobody could touch it. You follow, sir? And he called that, that's my God. So, thought can project any vision, any symbol, any figure, any image, and call it sacred. Right? And I say, look, it is still the projection of that thought which is fragmentary, one day, and so on, so on. I show that to you. I say, That's, is that meditation? And is there anything sacred in life? Nothing created by thought is sacred. I can thought can think it is sacred. Is there anything sacred? Which means sacred, which is untouched by thought. 
sacred which is not created by the hand or by the mind. Because without that sacredness, compassion becomes sublimated pleasure. I don't feel for me. If it interests you. So in meditation there is no will because we went into that. There is no direction. Because the moment you have direction there is time. Direction implies a goal which you which you have fixed according to your conditioning, fear, pleasure, hope and despair. Therefore you are still within the area of your own self and imagination and conflict. Therefore no, no direction, no will, which doesn't mean I am doing thy will. Right? And time. Is there psychological time at all? Except the chronological time there is. I have to go next week to Rome and India and so on. But is there psychological time? Me becoming better. You follow? Or there is only the ending of me every day. That is to find the truth of it, not just the imagination of it, not the verbal statement of it. Then the mind can the mind be completely still, not chattering. Not a silence that is not induced, a silence that is not brought about through discipline, control, suppression, a desired, desired effect. Because then it is merely an effect, not reality. So can the mind, with all its chatterings, with its problems, with its uh, vanities, this and you know, all that, can that all that subside, not for couple of minutes subside entirely. Otherwise the mind is not silent. And if it is not silent, it cannot the mind cannot possibly see, understand what is sacred. Not the images which thought is created in churches or in temples and so on. So all that and much more is meditation. Beginning from behaviour, affection, love, relationship, the relationship to society, the transformation of myself and the affecting the social consciousness and so on. All that is meditation. And going beyond the me and with all its problems. And if you ask me, have you done this? That's your inevitable question. Or is it just imagination, just a speculative nonsense? If I say yes, you take it either belief or on credulity or hoping that I have got it, because then you also might get it. I wouldn't talk about it if I didn't. If I, if it wasn't, I am not a hypocrite and I, would, I hate to be a hypocrite to myself, not to you. Therefore, what I, to me this, what I say is so. Yeah. 
Is it proper to ask, was there a time when you were not in this state? Because without asking, we assume you are in this state, not that you have you, come to you, this state. You don't know, sir. You see, my difficulty is, you cannot know what that state is. It's not a state, it is a movement. It's a movement which is not in time. Time means movement. But this is not this is the movement which is which it's not I don't know how to put it, it's not time movement from here to there. And your question is, has it always been there with you from childhood? Is that it, sir? I could redefine my question that there are certain physical conditions, like for example, certain kind of one way glasses. When you are outside, you because see an inside and outside. When you are inside, you, you see through it without any trouble. My information, my personal experience about unusual state, meditative state, is a state in which when you are in it, you couldn't imagine that any other state, that there is only... Know, sir, state. let me tell you, you cannot be in that state or imagine the state, or experience the state. To experience means there must be an experience, sir. At this point I have to fall back on his problem. I, I know, I know, I know. You are depriving me of all phrases that I could use. You are, you are using other phrases no, which I do no, not. No, I, I say you know nothing about it. You cannot know about it till you lead, till you begin from the beginning. <coughs> Righteous behaviour, relationship, conduct. Follow the, it is it's a whole basket. You can't take part of the basket and say, I've got it. You see, following this, you said of what you, you... I understood, I really did understand what you were saying. I may not have grasped the significance, but I could, now, I could now contrast it with those forms of meditation which before today I was familiar with. And you say things like, and I'm repeating you, repetition of words brings silence to the mind, and then you say, but it's not real silence. Now, have, you, have you tried repetition no. of words? Yes, huh? I have. Yes. It does produce... It's terrific. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, let me finish my answer. No, now, now, you say it's not real silence. I say to you, well, I've never experienced this real silence, so to me it is real silence. And you say, come with me and I'll show you real silence. Yes, i show it to now, sir. Listen to me. Listen to me. You know the silence between two noises? The silence between two noises? Mm -hmm. No, come on, sir. There are two noises going on, one noise, and in between there is silence. If I'm in between the two noises, Yes, yes, I'm, yes. Then I'm hearing both noises. I'm not. There's no. Not no, consecutive. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's not silence, is mm -hmm. it? It's like peace between two walls. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not silence, is it? No. Now, between two notes, that's a, another kind of silence, isn't it? Mm hmm. The silence of an evening, when the birds are just going to bed and there's a peculiar silence in the world. Mm -hmm. hmm? That's all external. Hmm? And there is silence between two thoughts, an interval. Mm -hmm. And thought is only waiting to spring on that interval. That's not silence, is it? All right, I'll, I mean, yes, okay, I'll agree. And, no, no, not agree. <clears throat> wait, wait. 
a silence that's induced through discipline, control, through mesmerism, through self-hypnotism, through drugs, through um, repetition of words. Mm. It's, that's not silence. It's an induced state. It's, it's an induced state of silence. And it's an induced state. Of but it's still what, silence. Uh, yes, all right, call it silence. Induced silence. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to induce it? You like it? Yes. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're back again in the realm of pleasure and fear of losing it. Okay, now, can I make two points? Well, just what you said. First of all, you were using argument now with me. No, no, yes, I'm not were, argument. You I'm were using... You were, you, you were trying to persuade me... I am not. That, I'm my, view, that my view of silence presupposes wrong views. No, sir. The, I said there are various induced forms of silences. Yes, but I, I agree. And then you said, but why should you want to induce it? And because I said, it's pleasure. Yes, yes. And I say, then, you're afraid to lose it. Mm. Of, of course, sir, when you enjoy something tremendously, uh, God, you want to keep it. Well, but then, I mean, there reaches a stage when I'm doing it that I want to stop because I want to get on. So, I'm, I mean, it's not a, it's not a fear. And, uh, no, if, you I really, if, it, if it meant something tremendous to you, mm. you are afraid to lose it. Like the Catholic are afraid to lose their belief. No, but it's like your example of the silence between two notes. I like it, but it, it's, between, it's between two states of mundane so you, living. What, my, what I'm trying to say, it, it is a motivated, uh, if I can use the American word motivated, mm. motivated silence. Mm. Where there's a motive, there's a time element involved. Mm -hmm. What has a cause is still of time. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that silence is uh, periodic, is um, Episodic. changeable. Episodic. Episodic. I don't know these mm. words. Episodic. Right. And I say to, to say, why go through all this trouble? Take a pill. Mm -hmm. It's as good as that silence idea. But you don't like pill because it is external, chemical, or whatever reasons. No, that is... Like, I don't know how far I have to pursue this. I mean, I think, I think it's important, but I think... I mean, I, I, you know, one would have to... So I say to you, wait, wait. Yeah. So I say to you, my friend, there is a silence which is the essence of creation. <coughs> hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. That silence has no motive. It cannot be induced. When once it is in, when the mind is silent of that, then heavens are open to you. I, that's all phrases. Mm -hmm. And you say, now, how do I get it? Hmm? I say, that's a wrong question. Mm -hmm. Because you want to get it. Right, it implies effort, etc. And that's no good, right. So, how do you come by it? I say, begin at the beginning. First step is the last step. <laughs> and you won't do that. You won't do that silence. Right, sir? Yeah, I don't know whether I should say yes or no. <laughs> if I say yes, you... <laughs> it seems to me that you you railroad us, as the Americans say. Uh, you <laughs> put us on put us onto a siding and then abandon us at there because we agree with you with regard to arguments up to a certain point. But clearly, you have a particular direction in which you are taking us, showing us. But then you say that, but you begin at the beginning because the first step is the last step. Mm. Why should we listen to you? Because Don't. No, 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 because you say that this condition, isn't it full of conflict? Isn't it anesthetic? Isn't it... Yes, quite. Contain, does it contain violence? Now, I could perhaps turn back the argument. There must be some flaw in it because you are not so easily... There must be... Um, um, I could turn back he's the flat, argument he's and... He's flattering me. Yes, I'm hoping <laughs> that at least... This <laughs> <is> <laughs> <a minute. laughs> that uh, I could turn back the argument and then say... This desire to en 
escape the conflict is in fact the uh, entanglement. I why should I escape the conflict? I, this is the no, way it, it is. No. I say it's not an escape. I say conflict. <clears throat> All right. Conflict implies duality. <clears throat> the me and the not me. Conflict implies the observer and the observed. And as long as you live in that conflict, you will have violence of various subtle forms of violence. It is the exaggeration of the self, and the world is destroyed by the self. You see it, I show it to you. And you see, either you say, go to hell, hmm? I think you're right, and I'll see what happens. There's, there is no two ways about it. I'm afraid I lost the point. So I point out to you, as you put it on to me, you say, why shouldn't I have conflict? Hmm? If you enjoy it, you wouldn't even ask it. Part of the conflict is that I like to listen to you. I, and the, you I like, like it. the way of <laughs> life that you have. <laughs> you, like, you like it. I okay. also like Julian's method of argumentation. Yes, of course. You, I mean, you like conflict. Most people do. Because that's their tradition, is part of their culture, part of their education, they are conditioned to like conflict. And therefore, in bring about a society which is consumed by conflict, inequality, poverty, for all the whole structure. And if you like that's there's nothing more to be said. In the in the majority of um daily or profane, non-sacred activities, it seems to me that I go through life neither causing conflict nor being concerned about conflict. When somebody is unkind to me, I try to be a little tough with them. When somebody is nice to me, I try to uh, enlarge the friendship. He doesn't insult me these days, so I am more friendly. Yes, <laughs> we, we stay together. And it seems to me I have no desire to change the world. I don't want to escape this world. I am profoundly grateful to whomever, uh, whoever, whatever is causing the situation in which I find the silence of the evening or the silence between thoughts or the silence. When thoughts are coming and going, that too, you watch the thing and you simply say well, this is silence. You, so if you, if you enjoy it, if you don't suffer from it, if you say, well, this is life, this part of my life, then there's nothing more to be said. And yet I see you who is a beautiful creature, you say that there is violence in the world. The world is going to trouble. God, going to the dogs. <laughs> uh, going to the dogs. And there is such uh, uh, cruelty of man to man. And the only way to change it is such and such. There is Bhagavan Buddha who said, I mean, we must have compassion for all the creatures. In the suffering, one of must course. understand suffering. So I would like to understand what is it that you want to understand? What is it that you? Why is it that you want to remove the conflicts from the in the world? I sound like a very uncompassionate person. This is not really true, but I don't. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? I, I do are not, you talking for the devil or what? Uh, I know. I am just asking. Why is? Why should I even want to have no conflict? But I am telling you, sir. If you like it. If it gives you profit, in both financially and emotionally and intellectually, and it gives you um, all the rest of it, Vazi, go to it. I'd like to tell you a, a fairy story that will throw light. I'm sure it will throw light on this. What, what, the, the misunderstanding that's going on. Once upon a time. I brought a little cousin of mine, I, I took a little cousin of mine to Harwell, which is the high energy particle physics lab near Oxford, to show him the mechanism. And on the way up, I didn't tell him anything about what he was going to see, or how it works, or anything. We talked about other things. We arrived there, and the accelerator wasn't on, so we went into the room and we saw this incredible, huge, circular piece of metal which I then explained was a magnet, and I, he was very young, so I couldn't go into the sort of detail that one would need to go into if you wanted to explain how it works. And he looked around, he was very impressed by all this very fancy, expensive machinery. Then we went into another room, 
which had a, a smaller pipe leading off to it, and there was a gantry on top of the a pool. So we climbed up on the gantry, we went over the pool, and we looked down, and what we saw was a super-saturated vapor. Super-saturated? Yes, it looked like... Um, Bubbly? Well, sort of cloudy, like... Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, I said to this little boy that I'm going to tell the technicians and the other big, where the, where the accelerator is, to turn on the accelerator, and then we're going to see what happens here. So I do this, and after a few seconds, this little boy gets very excited, because looking down from the gantry into the supersaturated vapor below, he saw all sorts of traces, terrific traces. And he said, what is that? And I gave him the conventional physics story. I said that, I told him the story about how high energy particles are whipped around this accelerator very, very quickly. They're then channeled off, and as they channel off, what we see, they go into the supersaturated vapor, and what we're seeing when we're looking down now is the traces they're leaving in the supersaturated vapor. I also say a little bit about, I begin to do a little bit of philosophy with them, and I say, Actually, we could never go down and peek underneath the vapor because the process of peeking will make the thing disappear. And I have to be careful to use ordinary words. In other words, I try to impress on him that we could never in principle see the particles themselves, but only the traces they leave in the vapor. He listens, but he's not too impressed. Then he tells me a story. He says, look, I don't like your story. What's happening down there is there are little green men, men underneath and they're playing football and they're running around and their heads are making indentations on the, on the supersaturated vapor below and what we're watching is a football game underneath the vapor. Now I get puzzled by this. And it's, a, oh yeah, the important point is that his story is as complete and as consistent as my story. Quite. So we have two stories, but the stories were sparked by the same observation, the same the same situation. Okay, well, I'll end the story. And it's obvious. What's happening here is this: we're like the little boy and the, his story and my story. In other words, what could I do to convince the little boy that his story isn't the right story? And why can't he turn around and start convincing me that his story is the right story? Uh, sir, now, um, uh, we are not convincing each other. But you see, there is a right story. In the physics example, there is a right story, and there are criteria for us saying that the little, the football story is a wrong story. And the, the, the reason why his story is wrong is because, in a wider context, his story makes no sense when slotted into our conceptual scheme, which he would even accept if articulated simply enough. Now, my faith is that there is... The sort, of con the sort of context that enables us to rule out his football story and rule my story, the correct one, we ought to be able, sitting around this table for a whole week, to at least be able to catch a glimpse of this conceptual scheme which will enable us to at least, if not rule one story right, yes, at least give us the sort of criteria that will make comparison meaningful to talk about. I don't... And, that's it. It is not comparative. Compare who? Compare with what? With your knowledge against my knowledge? No, no, no. With your view about meditation, for I, example, I, with my view. With David's no, view of I Buddhism, see, with my view of... If you I want. say it's not your view or my view. I, I went the view. There are two views. No, sir. You're misunderstood. No, I think that there really is. It comes down to the fact that your little boy... Uh, there's no, neither one of those, sto those stories could be compared because we would say they were second, I mean, just in line with what we're talking about, that there would be second order. Both of them are in, we don't really know what the, so the immeasurable reality is. But and both I, of them no, are sir. stories. Please, sir, just listen, sir. No, 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 no. No. Uh, I said, sir, please, sir. Sorry. I said, I'm not comparing. I am not comparing your meditation against my meditation or his meditation. Mm -hmm. I said, look what you are doing, you, what you are doing, which is concentration, mm -hmm. and see what is involved in it. Mm -hmm. Conflict, direction, therefore time, resistance, therefore denying. 
bit and I say, there is an attention which can concentrate, which can give attention to and yet not be caught in conflict, in resistance and so on. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's not comparison. No. What you've, what you've just done is elaborated your story. You've, given more, you've embellished it more. You've told me what it is compatible with and what it isn't compatible with. No, sir. That, yes, well, I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, we shouldn't disagree with that. That's, I mean, you've told me what, in other words, you've told me what your form of meditation is consistent with, and I understand that. Therefore, will you do it? It depends on whether I decide that I want to do it. I know. <laughs> you see, sir. No, Professor um, Wood. I think, I think your analogy is a very wrong analogy, and I think maybe um, it, gets at the, it gets at the problem. Um, I think in this situation, you and Krishnamurti aren't looking at the same supersaturated vapor. You, uh, in your story, you're both looking at the same thing. You and he aren't looking at the same thing. I, I, I would say that you haven't seen yet what he is talking about. And that's, and that's the problem. But, so th but I mean, it was agreed before, and that's why I made the, the, the analogy, that meditation means the same thing. Now, I took that as a... No, I don't think it was agreed. No, we did agree that we meant the same thing by yeah. meditation, and this was the starting point of right. the conversation, of and the that's argument. Like the observation. Otherwise, we couldn't even talk about it. We did so, agree about so that. Sir, I said that. And are you willing to see the, the, that concentration is not... What should we say? It's not meditation. It is just a schoolboy learning to concentrate on a book, or on a picture, or a phrase. Does it follow from that that the, the mantra type meditation, for example, is wrong? Which the mantra? Oh, I said, look, I don't. So I said, look, I know thousands of people who practice this, who have talked to. There's Maharishi Yogi, who goes round and you pay $35 or $20 and gives you a mantra, and you repeat that. And I say, good Lord, is that meditation? I don't know. I ask, and I say, I've listened to it. People have come to me, say, you must do it. You also, etc., fight me. I say, just let's calm down. Don't give me money, just talk with me. Is that meditation? What are you doing? Repeating mechanically a word, hoping thereby to experience some transcendental, etc., etc., etc. I said, I go into it very carefully. The effect of sound, the effect of music, the effect of bird singing, the effect among the leaves, breeze. I go into the whole of that, and I said, that's not. That is just a, a form of a great heightened amusement. Call it spirit. I don't care what you call it. And he says to me, no, you, you're wrong, I'm right. I said, all right. I don't want to convince him. I don't compare it. I said, look what you're doing. But it works. Mm. What's that? But it works. Works. But it does produce a kind of quietness. I, I, it I, is I, a limited quietness, it is a limited activity, it takes 20 minutes per day at $120 uh, for the first time, and um, <laughs> uh, 20, 40 minutes. And, uh, you, you could cheat and, and get a friend to give you a mantra? And uh, that's uh, apparently, it's not kosher, I mean. Yeah, I know. Sir, but you, <laughs> may, may I some, no, you must, protect, you must protect the mantra idea a little bit. Right, right. it cannot be given. No, sir, first of all, the man, the teacher who gave you the mantra, you had to live with him for years. He had to know you. He has to study your character, your behavior, your way of life, your, your, the way you looked at women, the way you looked at trees, the way you looked at other people, your relations with other people. Then, after many years 
and you had to go through special processes. It isn't just thirty-five dollars and you go and do it. Well, see, I agree with Primprim. Too bad he's not here. That I mean, uh, one would. Um, Who? Mr. <laughs> Professor Primprim, who's sitting there, he's sitting there. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would. I would tend. I mean, he. I don't know whether he would use the word defined, but um, the state one achieves when meditating could be physiologically measured, and um, I think this is all we need for our purposes. In other words. The sort, when it, one reaches a state that could be physiologically measured, which is qualitatively different from the other states, it's even given a name. I mean, if you're lucky, you could get into a state called the alpha state, which is different from the ordinary waking aroused well, state. What's the point of all this? Because it's, it, it's relaxed. It's a, it's a relaxing state. Yeah, it, that, it, I, I agree. What, is it, it relaxing? It rejuvenates you. That's the point. Um, I think he's... Uh, better... Per Krishnamurti, I don't think is. I think the real way we get hung up on is when we say meditation is wrong and right. You're really suggesting that the that the meditation is is different than what the way he's using the look, word. Look, we started off. We, I mean, I'm very grateful that meditation was got into this thoroughly. But we're all. I mean, I, I think I'm talking for Sadashan too. But he, certainly, this is what I mean. It for me, it's simply the vehicle through which we're getting clear where our methodologies. Mm -hmm. I think this is the way you have worked. Can I say something? I'd like to ask you a question. If I hope I'll be able to answer. <laughs> if then a person says or uh, understands what you mean when you talk about this state, this it's being. not what I mean. It is your life. Yes, but you're talking about it. I'm listening. And I can say I understand or I don't understand. But if I understand, does that mean that I am by of necessity in that state because oh, I've understood it? What you call it, it one must un define or un make clear what we mean by understand. Intellectual understanding, verbal understanding. Well, I thought that this very thing you're talking about meant not verbal understanding. Therefore, it, was something else. it means what? That you lead a life that is orderly. All that you can't just take meditation just by itself. It's all related. No, what I mean is that if certain people, as there are some people around here who maintain that they that by their remarks that they know what you mean, does that mean that really they're in that state? I cannot answer for others. But is it possible for someone to know what you mean without being in that state? What's that? Is it possible for me to say that I've understood what you've been saying without having, as it were, experienced what you were talking about? How, I, I can't. I don't doubt it. I, how can I say No, but... <laughs> what I'm saying is this. Uh, Julian's being honest in the sense that there is no inconsistency in the way he behaves or exists and what he's saying now. I don't now quite follow this. Sorry, I must be done. What, what are you trying to do? He maintains that Who? he... Julian. Me. Ah, I beg your pardon. Um, there's no inconsistency between his mode of living, his, the, his existence, well, how he lives, and what he's saying about um, these various things, about not quite understanding what you mean. Now, what I'm saying is, is there... Could there be a way of understanding what you mean, but being inconsistent in that one doesn't carry it out? Yeah, that's a good question. Important question. Sure. Professor. Yeah, could I uh, raise a point? I'm uh, um, at a loss because uh, there has been discussion about whether methods of meditation work. I somehow feel this has got off the, the rails badly. And I just feel that uh, possibly one would get it back on the rails if one took up the point that you uh, mentioned that death had not been discussed. I mean, wouldn't this possibly Go get to us? Death, sir. Hmm. Death. Yes, uh, yes. Yes. Do, um, yes. Yes, I just, uh, you know, it's 20 past five, so you oh. decide whatever you want to do. We're, by going to all these topics, though, we're avoiding the issue, the big issue. We are. Well, no, no. no. Look, well, big, 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 look, the this big is issue, issue is. No, it's not just my issue. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's just not my issue. Well, no, just a moment, please. I mean, uh, Morris Wilkins thinks that this. Sir, uh, can we discuss this question of death tomorrow morning? Yes, that would be good. May we, sir? 
Yes, but I feel that these, this, the way the other issue is going is, um, can be helped by this consideration. I think that's my point. Oh, well then... Can I, make a, a short, I think we should be aware here that there are two different things and people with different intentions. Some people want to talk about meditation. Other people want to talk about our communication and various methodological problems and are willing to take meditation as an example. But we could, for Julian, I think you would be happy to talk about any subject, but you're more interested in the way we communicate and in different types of knowledge yeah, except and so on. We have gone on to something in which and there are well-defined examples. Yes, which so we, we have, have chosen a very good example. Do we but have to talk about things all the time? Wait, about meditation, about wait, wait a moment. So, so these, the people who are more interested in the subject tend to concentrate on that. And the others tend more to concentrate on the forms and methods and uh, words and so on. So there are two different intentions and I, maybe we should separate them. I don't know. Can, can't we get a whole view of this? Like looking at a map of Europe or America, or you looking at a map, not in any wanting to go in any direction, then you don't see the map. Yeah. I think we can't as long as we are talking. If we want to talk, then we want to no, talk. No, I've talked. We can't get a whole no, view. No, I talked. I said, look at this map. Don't go. Don't look at the particular town you want to go to, mm -hmm. but look at this whole map. Yes, we can do it. But that's all. That's all. Uh, could I, I mean, if there's one more person who wants to talk. Could I suggest that if we it would be better to start the question of death in the morning when people are fresher? Uh, but yeah, so our life takes a great life to understand death. And now, if you want to say, uh, I'd like to respond to, to Liz's question uh, about understanding what. Krishnamurti is saying. Now, I read, I read his book very carefully. I read it a couple of times at separate intervals before I came. And I got part of the idea, but I, um, I wasn't feeling particularly positive towards it. And as I've listened to him, I've been getting a better and better and better idea of what he's talking about. Now, now how do I get this idea? It's certainly not because I'm living it you know, all the time, but I've had some experiences. I, at times I've been able to um, put aside my attachments and to get in touch with my violence. At times I've been able to do this, so I get, I get a sense of what he's saying. Uh, and, and I don't think it's so terribly, terribly yes. difficult to do. You are not in love with meditation, that's all, sir. When you are in love with a woman or a man, you don't go on what you call out your hair and discuss and you, are, you don't love this thing to find out what it means. Look, some people are implying that it's wrong to question. No. And that irritates me. It really no. does, if I'm to be honest. Darling, sir, I'm sick. I have questions. No, no, excuse me, I wasn't referring to you. I wasn't referring to you. But some people say that if anyone begins to question in an attempt to understand, we're doing we're, we're wasting time. No, I, that's, think, that's I think that there's a certain misunderstanding going on and uh, perhaps uh, it might be best, you know, if we could argue it out in, uh, in smaller groups before the morning. Uh, uh, because, uh, but I, if, if, uh, uh, but if somebody wants to ask us a short question, Pastor, you can have it. But I, I, I think that it, you know it's getting rather late, and it might be yes, all getting a bit late. tired. Perhaps it'd be best to start again in the morning. Mm -hmm. Can I just say that I'm really very thankful to Julian for for doing all the questioning because yes. I'm yes. not very. Really I agree. Yes, I mean it's a very useful function.